Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody. How you doing? Happy Friday. What's up? What's up? Dennis. Welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Rusty, as always. Glenn B is going to catch up later. Thanks for checking in. James in Syracuse, what's up? Uh, we've got Peter in a rain-soaked Sydney. All right, good day. Peter, what's up? Jody One, how you doing? Welcome, everybody. Excellent, excellent. Jason, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, for those of you joining for the first time, uh, if you don't know the drill, we've got tabs. So expand the video below uh, below this video. Expand the description, I mean to say. Uh, there's a link to the tabs for tonight's session. Acoustic, finger-picking based, but of course you can use this on electric if that's what you've got. If, if you've got an electric guitar, these are still skills that are transferable back and forth. So I uh, always encourage you to do that. What's up, Theodore? John McCarthy, hello. Good to see everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully the tabs don't have <laughs> any errors. I've been through it, but there is usually a mistake somewhere. So I apologize in advance if that's the case. Uh, we got some eagle eyes on the case here usually that uh, pointed out to me. So I appreciate that. HH, what's up? Good to see you as always. Arthur. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I like it. I like the rhyme. Arthur's got a rhyme going. Another Friday practice. Hey, 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 it's time to play. Grab your guitar, watch and learn today. Good day, Craig. Good to see you. Jim Gregory, good to see you. Is there a prize for spotting the mistake? Unfortunately, no. Bragging rights? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if I can get one of these uh, sets of tabs off with zero mistakes. That's what I was trying this time. So we'll see. <laughs> Buddy, what's up? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. All right. So as always, uh, just some exercises, musical examples, things to hopefully get some practice in. Um, maybe be exposed to something new, maybe some, be inspired by something and take it away and kind of work on it this week. Uh, is always the goal with uh, what I put together for these sessions Friday night. So uh, hopefully you'll find it uh, hopefully educational, hopefully fun, hopefully inspiring, all that stuff. Zane, what's up? How's it going? Back at you. Hope you're doing well. HC Chan, what's up? Peter, good to see you. All right. So uh, yeah, if you're on an electric guitar, no problem at all. Uh, the acoustic is, is generally speaking, a little bit easier to finger pick with, but uh, plenty of guitar players finger pick on the electric, right? So uh, transferable skills uh, for sure. Just a note about basic technique. And of course we have some basic technique lessons on guitar tricks. There's an acoustic course. There's also the fundamentals course where I think Lisa talks a little bit about finger picking. If not, Lisa has some mini courses for finger picking. Okay. Um, so check those out for a lot more instruction into this kind of stuff, but nice and relaxed um, on the on the body here, sort of near the elbow, resting across diagonally so that you've got your fingers somewhere near the sound hole or sort of somewhere between the end of the neck and the saddles, okay, the bridge. Somewhere in the middle is a good spot, okay? Um, of course, a lot of people like to plant their pinky on the body or pink their or plant their fingers somehow and get a steady base. Other people like to float. I'm one of those guys that kind of likes to float unless sometimes I'm doing some palm muting or just sort of resting on the lower strings if I'm doing some stuff up top. Okay. Um, none of those are right or wrong. It's just whatever fits uh, naturally for you. Okay. Uh, starting it off with a question, Rudy, do I get to pick which songs I get to teach on guitar tricks? Uh, there is a master list of songs that are negotiated by uh, guitar tricks and publishing companies that come in and they say, okay, we got clearance for this list of songs. What would you like to teach? So out of that list, yes, I get to pick uh, what I would like to teach. I'll just grab a handful of songs and teach those a uh, handful at a time, right? 
Uh, but no, I don't get to pick off the top of my head songs that I would love to teach. Of course, there are thousands of those, but on Guitar Tricks, they do it. They, you know, really try to do it the right way and they secure uh, licensing deals with publishers. So we sort of get what we get uh, with that uh, sort of arrangement. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, but yes, they sort of give me the list and I pick from the list. All right, King 50, Northern Nevada is here. Excellent, excellent. And Rusty, thank you as always, uh, getting these subscribes and the like buttons hit. <laughs> HH, you'll get there. Keep playing, okay? Keep trying to learn songs. Listen, I've been at this a long time, so I can uh, pick up songs pretty quick because I've been learning songs for many, 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 many years. And you develop your ear and you kind of get to hear things. You can listen to a song and start to hear what's going on even if you're not near a guitar, okay? So that's sort of the goal with all of us, right? Develop those ears, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, and eventually you'll get to that point where you can learn a handful of songs at a time, <laughs> hopefully. That's the goal, right? What's up, Alonzo? Northern uh, Virginia? I think so, North Virginia. Alonzo, good to see you. <laughs> All right, uh, we usually start this off with some sort of a warm up. Uh, so with the finger picking, I try to just get uh, the fingers involved a little bit here. Uh, just a little simple chord progression, okay? Uh, starting on an A minor. All right, so uh, what we've got is uh, starting on the root with the thumb and just first, second, third finger on each string when you go up, okay? So yeah, thumb, and three fingers on this, okay? And by the way, I've, uh, uh, buddy, I've put the, uh, on the staff, you can see the, t the lowercase t for thumb, one, two, and three for index middle ring. I don't think we're getting the pinky involved in this particular week. Uh, usually I'll try and do that, but this week it kind of didn't work out. So uh, a note about this though, this, this is just uh, suggested. It's not written in stone what fingers you need to use. Okay, um, just a suggested sort of way to get the fingers going, but uh, there you go, get your nose involved too, right? Uh, but uh, you know, whatever feels the most natural for you, because uh, you know, what I'm trying to do with this warm up is to keep it a little more strict because I want to get those fingers involved, right? And then on the next one, I'm just going to move the thumb and the three fingers just up a string set. Okay? So that's the idea with this warm up is that I'm playing with those fingers and then when I go back to the D string I'm going with the thumb. Okay? So I'm always using the same four you know, the, th the thumb and the three fingers on this one, okay? That's what we're going for here. Okay, James, do you recommend using the thumb always on strings six, five, and four, and index on three, middle on two, ring on one, always? Never always, because it just depends. Um, I tend to do that, generally speaking. However, um, uh, I'm not going to say that that's the way that everybody should do it. OK, because uh, the more they can get all the fingers involved and get some agility with everything, I think that makes you a little more uh, flexible and uh, a little more to be able to take on uh, sort of anything that's thrown your way a little bit. Um, but, yes, yeah, sort of what you've suggested is sort of generally kind of what I do, uh, because pinky, the pinky is generally speaking really weak. Right. So. Uh, so these three fingers tend to be a little stronger. So uh, that's it. But sometimes I'll maybe do that or maybe do, just do uh, like in this exercise with the thumb and then just go right to the index middle ring and then work on those across a different string set. Okay, so we do that on A minor. Then to C, right? Same finger picking. Okay, but then E minor, we're going to shift it down, okay, so that it's on the low string. But it's the same idea. We're going to go low string and then one, two, three, and then A string, one, two, three. Okay, so. Right? Maybe 
catch a turn a little bit. Let's see. I think I did what he said there. I am a thumb dragger a little bit, so I tend to sort of default to that a little bit. I got to concentrate on this kind of stuff, right? And then on the D chord, I just sw switched it a little bit to just go up and down. So, okay, so thumb on the D string and then one, two, three, and then back two, one. So just put that together in a nice little exercise. Play it as slow as you need to, right? It's more important to have steady timing and to play it correctly than to try to blow through it and kind of make mistakes or stop your time kind of in the middle of it when you change chords, right? So Just a little thing to get going, a couple minute exercise just to get the fingers going and a little bit of a workout, right? All right, uh, Jeff, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, Steve. Great to see you. Uh, I keep missing Dave because Thursday's rough. Yeah, totally get it. Uh, hopefully, I think he does his, his on Facebook, so hopefully those stay on Facebook. Maybe you can catch it later sometime this weekend. Kenneth, what's up? All right, welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Uh, first exercise down, we're on to exercise two. Uh, just to reiterate, if you're just joining, expand the description. There's a link to some tabs. There's a link to go get tabs and follow along, all right? Next exercise looks like this. So what we've got here is starting off with the upper part of a G bar chord, okay? Fifth fret of the D, fourth fret of the G barring down, third fret of the top, two strings. But adding my pinky to get the fifth fret of the top string. So just adding like a different note onto the top of this chord, okay? Uh, to make just a really simple melody. Another difference with this one is that we are plucking with the thumb on the D string and also with the third finger up top, the ring finger, plucking the high string at the same time and then coming down. Okay. Very simple melody, right? So. Uh, same thing down two frets. Now we're on an F major chord, okay? Exact same thing where you got your pinky on the third fret this time. Coming down. And then we're going to get into a C shape, okay? Except that I'm still, bar I'm going to bar down on the first fret of the top two strings and have the C going on underneath or, or down on the lower strings, right? So see there, when, when I, uh, the first ones, and then I'm going to lift up. So that's sort of a sus four, right? Adding the F on there. And then when I come down on the C major with the open E string, middle, index, and then thumb on the D string, ending that off, right? So... nice little strum with your thumb on the open G chord, right? You can grab it any way you'd like. I'm already in the C position, so it's easy for me to just grab it with these three, three fingers, right? Everybody kind of get that one? So just a, adding a, just a, the next layer of complexity a little bit by hitting two notes at the same time, right? And just a simple melody. Now check this out. When we're working with this bar chord shape, major bar chord, there are more than just this note 
that are free range here in the major scale, right? So if you learn the notes around this shape, it can open up a lot of melodic possibilities. So I've got the A note and then going to the G, but you can also do that on the B string. Fifth fret on the B string, and you also get fifth fret on the G string as well. It gives you a sus, right? So. So just be aware of not only the chord shape, but what notes are around the chord that you can kind of embellish a little bit. And it just, it can be something very simple, right? Just even in this exercise, you know, right? Okay. Hopefully you guys see that. All right, Steve, I was all over the fingerstyle blues and country, then got stuck on anything I could find with steel guitar bands and solo, most mo solos. Uh, mostly Dwight Yoakam, but I'm trying to keep both in check. So uh, steel guitar bends and solos. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about electric, clean uh, Telecaster maybe. We got a bunch of uh, Yoakam on there that I taught, a few of those. Uh, guitars, Cadillacs, great stuff. And uh, there was the one that, that, uh, uh, that just went on. Uh, about a month ago with some great Telecaster country playing. So fun stuff. But yeah, uh, try to keep it balanced, right? Like, you know what you like as a guitar player. So, uh, you know, you can like all sorts of different things, all sorts of different techniques. Uh, but if you put a whole bunch of work into finger style and now you're kind of putting a whole bunch of work into sort of the electric country uh, bending licks and all that kind of stuff, uh, you don't want to forget all that work that you put into on the acoustic. So yeah, keeping a balance, right? Try and keep a balance of everything. Go back and go over a lot of that stuff that you work so hard on and uh, make sure that it's sort of still there. You can kind of call it up and, uh, and have it available to you, right? You don't want to forget that stuff. <laughs> so the key is to try and keep it as fresh as you can. So always uh, take, you know, every couple of weeks, uh, refresh, particularly with songs you learn. I like that you keep a list of all the songs you know, and even if you're working on sort of newer songs, uh, don't forget all those other songs that you spent so hard working on, uh, you know, and just sort of play through them every once in a while, keep them fresh and, and sort of keep them in there a little bit. All right, <clears throat> come up with a repertoire of things. Exercise three. Uh, <laughs> oh, James Cody, so are you indicating that you are not limited to plucking the rest notes. You can also play open strings around it. Uh, what I'm indicating is that uh, with all of these exercises, like uh, I'll tab it out and I'll play it uh, how it's tabbed, but I like you to experiment, okay? So I, I like to for you to, to have some avenues to kind of play around with this stuff and try to come up with your own thing, right? So, uh, fretted notes, not rests. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. Um, exercise two or exercise three? Are you indicating you're not limited to plucking the rest notes? You can also play open strings around it. Um, fretted notes, not rests. Tien, what's up from Vietnam? Welcome, welcome, good to see you. Uh, if you could be a little more specific, James, uh, I'll try and help. Yeah, exercise two. There's not any rests in this. Uh, I guess I should have been a, a little bit uh, more specific on the rhythm. What's up, Erica and Doug? Welcome, welcome. Uh, these are eighth notes, right? So one and two and three and four. And you're just letting that last one ring out as a quarter note. So that rings out for four and four and, right? So. That's the rhythm. Okay, so there shouldn't be any rests. It's more just, you know, the fourth beat of every, bar, of the those first three bars uh, just has a quarter note that sort of rings out, okay? Um, if that makes sense, 
All right. If I didn't quite get what your question was, try to rephrase it. Uh, try to be a little more specific and uh, I'll give it another crack. All right. Because I, I appreciate all the questions and all the engagement, everybody. All right. Exercise three. Uh, I might recognize this one. It was, this is sort of similar to the last time we were on the acoustic. Somebody uh, thought that something sounded like this. So I thought that we would just go, go all in on it a little bit. But uh, here we go. Andre from Quebec. Welcome, welcome. No problem. John, what's going on? Good to see you. Yes, you got it, Doug. Uh, Steve, I'm kind of building a set list with levels of difficulty, maybe different sets. And that changes, of course. Of course. Yes, Steve. I love the idea of the set lists and run through them. It's fun, right? That's what we all get into it for. <laughs> all right. What's up, Scott? Welcome. Glad you could make it. Okay, so a little bit tricky here because we've got uh, thumb, first and second fingers doing the lower part of the chord, uh, starting with an A minor. And then with that ring finger, I'm going to grab the, the top string, third fret. And uh, that top note is going to be ch changing as we go through the chord. So three, open. Okay, and then we go to this where we just... We don't have to move any fingers except the ring finger to come to the low G note, third fret of the low string here. That opens up the open G string, but we've still got these notes from the A minor. It now becomes an A minor seven slash G, right? So now the thumb is on the low string, but I've got the first and second string on the D and G. And then once again, third fret up top on the top string and then open string, so. Then we've got a D7 over F sharp, so you sort of have to shift your fingers around here. You can still have your index finger planted on the C note, first fret of the B string. But now we're moving the middle finger down to the second fret of the low string, and then the ring finger has to come up to the second fret of the G string. Okay, so same finger picking though as the previous bar. Except that the high note is now on the B string. So you've got the ring finger on the B string, third fret, and then that's going to move on the second time down to the first fret. After that, we get the F, F chord, F major bar chord. Okay, thumb on the root note first fret of the low string, but then we've got index starting on the D string and then second on the G, third on the B. And then just follow that shape down. What I like to do is get the E. I've got these fingers in position so I can just slide it down and remove the bar, right? So that now I've got that open chord. Okay. So you put that together. You with me? So the key to this, and you know, I, I beat this drum every week, right? Is uh, you got to get this under your fingers at a slow speed at first. Uh, unfortunately, this is not on Guitar Tricks, okay? Doug uh, wants to see it on Guitar Tricks, as does Erica. Unfortunately, uh, we, uh, we've we only got a couple Led Zeppelin songs, and it's the ones that they didn't write. It's wh whoever... Uh, sort of got different writing credit on that. So, uh, man, I tell you, Guitar Tricks has been trying to get Led Zeppelin songs forever and uh, just not happening on some of this stuff. Although I believe, it wasn't this a Joan Baez song or something? I I'm not sure. Maybe not. Maybe it was a, it's a traditional song that they sort of uh, appropriated. <laughs> Don't know, you know, Led Zeppelin has been in the courtroom before, right? So uh, anyway, great progression, uh, great idea, right? With a descending chord progression and sort of those melody lines, very simple, just sort of uh, moving on top. 
right? Uh, more of an extension of that previous exercise, right? Where we're experimenting with just putting in some different notes on top of the chords, okay? Uh, so that's a good one. All right, yeah. Too bad we don't have it on Guitar Tricks, but uh, if you're resourceful, I'm sure you can find it elsewhere on other sites, right? YouTube, there's gotta be some uh, guitar lessons on that one on YouTube, right? All right, uh, exercise four. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. Hit that like. All right, so getting into sort of a little more of that piano style uh, um, thumb and plucking. Oh, there you go. So it's a folk song written by someone else in the late 50s. Thanks, Jody One. But Joan Baez did record a solo version of that in 62. Okay, so I thought that she had had something to do with that. But there we go. All right, exercise four, uh, sort of the plucking thumb and the plucks. So now we're going to sort of lock the, the first, second, and third finger together. <laughs> Arthur, somebody wants to put a dot right here. It's driving you nuts, huh? All good. All right, so uh, let's play through this here, and uh, we'll talk about it a bit. It's the Martin thing. No dot on the third. Although I swear I've seen Martins with dots on the third. So who knows? <laughs> All right, Chaz, what's up? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, my friend. <laughs> Chaz Williams, everybody. He's a master guitarist. Look him up. <laughs> All right. So we've got some... Uh, this sort of piano approach and a little bit of a muted sort of slapping style. I mean, I'm not going crazy with it, but that's sort of what we're doing. It's sort of a muted, muted strum, right? And really all I'm doing is just clamping down my fingers onto the strings. And it's sort of up to you as to how hard you slap this. Okay? Doesn't have to be super hard. Or it could be. It just depends on what you want to do musically, right? Yeah, it gives it a per percussive thing. So notice that we're hitting these on the two and four, right? So that's the backbeat, and that's like a, a really typical spot for guitar players to sort of hit that percussive thing, right? One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four, right? That's sort of what we're doing. So... Starting off with a G chord. All right. Thumb, pluck. And so we've got uh, eighth notes, one and two on the second beat. That's when we're just coming down. We've got the karate chop down here that can kind of cut off all the strings. But I also, you know, if you want to get percussive, you can kind of just knock the strings a little bit with your with your fingernails, it kind of gives you that high end sort of like that, right? But remember on that second, ah yes, yeah, so look at that. Big head Todd and the monsters. Big head Todd and the monsters. One and two and three. So we're coming right in with a thumb, uh, thumb pick again or a thumb and then on the third beat the pluck letting it ring out to the fourth beat and cutting it off so okay now notice that up top in those first three bars I've got I've got the open G string third fret of the B and high E string I've got those uh, just locked in right I'm just changing the root notes so third fret of the A string. Okay, so that's going to give us a C add nine sound, right? Then I'm going to go to the low E string. E minor seven sound, and then the D chord, okay, D major. And now the thumb goes to the D string, right? 
And it's a little bit different there at the end. We're just doing one muted strum. Okay. And then I've got my pinky on the third fret of the high string on the open D chord. So that's D sus four. And then back down to the second fret gives you back to D major. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Steve, something to work on this week, right? Okay. You with me? That's the idea with that one, all right? There we go. Doug says, is Martin SC... 13 has a third fret dot, but is Martin D28 and Martin D16 do not have the third fret dot. So there you go. Some models have it, some models don't. <laughs> Rusty, I appreciate the kind words. Thanks so much. Thank you for being here as always. All right. Exercise five. Uh, oh, well, right on, Scott. That's awesome. Scott learned something cool tonight. That's excellent the whole goal of this thing, right? Okay, so uh, a little bit of a ragtime progression, uh, which means that we're going to put a little bit of a swing into our finger picks, okay? Uh, so I'm going to play through this, and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. that again take two right ah there we go three times a charm right maybe that was four times through i don't know anyway it takes me a little bit sometimes now we're getting away from those open chords and playing more sort of bar chord type things. Um, so I'm starting with a C chord, third fret of the A string, and then barring down on the fifth fret of the D, G, and B. Okay. And once again, using the thumb and then just the first three fingers. Okay, going up and then back down. Now, what we have to sort of do here is add a little bit of a swing to it, because if I didn't swing this, it would sound like this. And ragtime is going to have a little bit of a swing. So every second uh, or the ands of, on this, one, one, and two, and three, and four, instead of one, and two, and three, and four, we're going to swing it. We're going to push that and a little closer to the next downbeat. So one and two and three and four and. Okay. Now, what kind of throws it off a little bit is that fourth note where you're holding it out for a full beat. So it's going from and to and, right? And then you're picking it up again. Okay. So if you got to go slow, go slow with it. Next, we're going to an A7, bar chord, fifth position, barring down at the fifth fret, adding the seventh fret of the A, sixth fret of the G string. Thumb is going to be on the low string, but the first, second, and third fingers are going to be on the D, G, and B string. And that's the same picking pattern as before. Turn this way a little bit so you can see it, hopefully. Ah. Okay. Then we've got D7. This bar chord is going to be barring down fifth fret from the A string all the way up, adding the seventh fret of the D, seventh fret of the B string. Now that's just four little picks. So we're going to do a really quick chord change to the G7 after that. Okay, just going up, thumb, first, second, third. Then it's G7, same shape as the A7, but down two frets. And 
it's the same picking pattern with the thumb on the low string instead, right? So. Ah. Okay. And then I chose to end it off with a little bit of a thumb, uh, thumb strum on the C major, but you can just kind of keep going. You can loop those three bars if you'd like. So. Is your index finger lifted there? Uh, where exactly? Let's see. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right, exercise six. We've got a melodic progression with a pull-off. So this one is going to be a little bit different. The shape of this is a little bit different because we're throwing in some 16th notes into this one. So uh, let's see what this one sounds like. That's what the, that's what the rhythm is. One more time. That's exercise six. And once again, uh, adding some sort of melodies on top of a chord shape and uh, this time using a pull off. Okay. Which we've kind of done lots of lots before. Um, once again, a minor shape, got my thumb on the open a and then index middle ring on the top three strings. Right. Okay, then it's a pull off three to the open string on the top string. Now, these are eighth notes, one and two. And then when I get to that third fret of the high string, it's gonna go 16th, so it's quicker, that pull off. I let it ring out for a bit and then come back down, middle and index. Okay, two more 16th notes. Okay, and then thumb on the D string. One more time. All right. Then we move that into the F chord, okay? And just three, two, and one on the D, G, and B string, but still doing that pull off from three to the open string up top. Okay, so. Okay. So exactly the same picking pattern, but this time the thumb comes down to the D string. Then we're back to the C chord here. So now the thumb goes back to the A string, but again, we're doing G, B, and then high string. And then hitting that thumb on the D string at the end. Okay, second fret of the A string. So this time we're shifting the index, ring, and pink, and uh, middle, uh, index, middle, and ring, fingers down a string set okay my thumb is going to be on the a string but then now i'm plucking the d g and b string and the pull offs on the b string third fret to the open string okay so enough variation in there i think to keep you on your toes a little bit once again take this really slow and work it up to speed okay Makes 
sets. All right. Excellent, excellent. HH, I guess my finger picking course is paying off. This is a good refresher. Must be a first for me. All right, all right. Good news, good news. Cheers. Good refreshers. This is also meant to be a good refresher every Friday, right? <laughs> so however, however this can help, uh, I hope it does for all of you out there. All right, for those of you uh, just joining in the middle of this, uh, expand the description below the video if you're looking for the tabs. Uh, there's a link to the tabs. You can follow along. Uh, we're getting towards the end of this session. And uh, would be nice to get uh, some questions going. I think we might be done a little bit early. We're blowing through this a little bit, but uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up. So exercise seven. Uh, back to a shuffle. Okay, so uh, we were doing that shuffle, uh, that swing feel <clears throat> for the uh, ragtime progression a couple of exercises ago. And then we went back to just normal feel. And now we've got sort of a shuffle, uh, shuffle swing kind of thing, right? Cool, Doug. He says it's uh, really cool how those little nuances, those little nuances add a lot. Yes. Totally agree. Fun to mess around with, right? And once again, hopefully that just inspires some experimentation on your part to be able to just uh, take any chord and kind of just mess around with different rhythms, different embellishments. Exercise seven, uh, let's see the top line first. We'll kind of go through this. This is sort of uh, uh, the first part of this is really just alternating between the thumb and the middle finger. Okay, and we're, we're sort of changing the higher notes and uh, sort of having a root note on the bottom. So it starts off out of a D shape, even though you're just picking uh, just a few of those notes. You're not picking the whole chord, right? Now we've got the shuffle going on, okay? So... So if I was to play, uh, if I was pl to play straight time on this, okay, one and two and three and four and, but when you've got that shuffle or that swing going, one and two and three and four and, okay, you want to delay those ands a little bit so it gets a little bit more of a bounce. So that's the top line of this first four bars. One more time. All right, so let's look at the next two bars. We're going into a C chord, and now we're going to start moving that root note a little bit. Okay, so we're anchoring down on the top note this time, first fret of the B string. One more time. A little bit faster. All right, so we've got starting with the root up to the high C note, and then we're going to thumb. Uh, we're going to thumb on the open D string, hammering on quickly to the second fret. Okay, then you're going to thumb onto the G string after that. And with that same finger you did the hammer on on the D string with, okay, you're going to go to the second fret of the G after that. You got the pinky to get the third fret of the G, then come back down. And then pinky on the D string third fret. That's how it ends off. <laughs> 
Steve, I saw your message. Yes, I did. I did do it. Scott asks, uh, do you ever use finger picks? Uh, I've never really experimented with that kind of thing. So uh, have to do that sometime. But uh, no, I have not. Uh, how about anybody on here tonight? Anybody use finger picks? Like that feel? Definitely gets a brighter sound, right? Uh, cool, cool. Saves the calluses. <laughs> Uh, Doug, do you flat pick much? Let's see. Uh, needle and damage done. Yeah, sort of. That's sort of what we're going for here. It's not quite what he would do. I think he strums this one, right? But uh, it's a fun one to finger pick. Uh, Doug says, I use Travis picking with the thumb as the bass player with vast majority of my picking. Uh, so there you go. Cool, cool. Do you flat pick much? Uh, Almost sounds like a banjo, and yes, I do. All right, Arthur uses the thumb picks or the finger picks, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, get get that bright banjo sound. Uh, do I flat pick much? I don't know. Uh, sort of in a bluegrass sense, I think maybe is maybe what you're asking. I'm not sure. I just uh, you know when it's finger picking time, I use the fingers. Uh, sometimes when I'm finger picking, I'll add a pick, right? So I'll, you can hold a pick. And probably do this, right? I can get a really bright sound on the bass notes, right? If you hold a pick and then just use these three fingers for all of it, that's totally something else that we could do as well. Steve says, what is flat picking? I, yeah, I, I thought that flat picking was just uh, sort of a bluegrass term. But so uh, I'm not sure 100% what it is. I'm, I'm not like a flat picking uh, expert, I guess. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So that's that, uh, those two bars there. And then it just sort of ends off with a sort of a different finger pick. Okay, on an E sus4 going to a uh, E7. Uh, e sus4 going to an E chord. Okay, and I do that in this particular example, I go thumb on the low string thumb on the D string, and then just two fingers up top. All right, so let's try and play through it one time, the whole thing. That's what Doug's talking about, using the pick for the low notes and then the fingers for the high notes. There you go. So flat picking. I think that's what we mean by that. All right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, exercise seven. There you go. Add a, make sure to get that bump, 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 that bounce in it. One and two and three and four as opposed to one and two and three and four, right? Straight time versus the shuffle. All right, always ending off these sessions with some sort of a Travis picking uh, example. Um, I thought in this case, this is sort of less of a musical example, but this is more of a, a theory example showing you the chord set in the key of C major. We're going through each of the chords. So if you look at each bar, we're starting on the one chord, C major seven. We go to the two chord, three chord. The two and three chords in this key, in any major key, are minor chords. So we've got minor seven chords. Then we get to the four and five chords. The four chord is the major seven. The five chord is the dominant seventh. Okay. Six chord is minor. Seven chord is your minor seven flat five. And then back around to your major, your one chord again, right? So let's see, I'm gonna play through this and we'll explain it a little bit. It goes like this. Um, let's see. All right, that's 
what we're going for there. So uh, fun stuff, right? Let's go back to this C major seven shape. Bar and down, third fret of the A string all the way up. And I've got the fifth fret of the D and, and uh, B string, fourth fret of the G, okay? Now, what I'm doing is alternating the thumb root and then the fifth up on the D string. Okay, we're also starting off with um, a pluck on the B string. So thumb and a pluck at the same time. Okay, so it's that, got that Travis, Travis picking rhythm to it. Adding in some extra notes up top in between them. Okay. Just going to use that rhythm on the A string up to the B string. Okay, move it up. And we've got D minor seven. Right? So I've got, I'm barring down at the fifth fret. I've got the seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the B. Move that up. Now we're at the three chord, three minor, E minor, seven. Okay, same shape, up two frets. Then we end up at the four chord. This is F major seven right here. So it's the same shape as the C, it's up here at the eighth position. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is change string sets because we're going to get up pretty high here, right? So I bring it back down and now I'm going to get a G dominant seventh shape in the fifth position. Now the root's on the D string. So I've got the fifth fret of the D, seventh fret of the G, sixth fret of the B, seventh fret of the high string, right? All I have to do is just move what I've been doing from the A to the B string and just move that up a string set to between the D and the high E string. See. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't tell me. No. I missed it. All right. I'm going to edit that right at the end of the session. That should be the sixth fret. Sixth fret. Okay. Bar 37, last line. It just wouldn't be a session with me with your friend Mike, without it. And Jason, thank you. <laughs> you win the bragging rights tonight. Yes, that should be the sixth fret of the B string in bar 37, okay? I will, I will fix it and re-upload it at the end of this. So there'll be a new link and it'll be fixed, okay? <laughs> oh man, just so dejected. I can't believe I just have the worst proofing skills ever. All right, moving up to an A minor seven, the sixth chord, okay? Roots the A note, seventh fret of the D string, fifth, ninth fret of the G string. And this is kind of a tough grab a little bit because you're gonna bar down, well, I use the middle finger bar down on, on the eighth fret of the top two strings. I suppose you could kind of grab it this way if you need to with the two fingers on the eighth fret and then use the pinky on the ninth fret but I'm, I'm able to flatten this middle finger okay okay thanks Scott I appreciate the vouch <laughs> Thank you. okay so we're going Keeps us alert. <laughs> I like it, Peter. All right. Then we're going to go ninth fret of the D, barring down at the tenth fret of the top three strings. This gives you B minor seven, flat five. Okay. There's your, your 
root note, your B. And that's the seven chord in a major key. Okay, the seven chord, minor, minor seven flat five. It's got sort of the diminished sort of sound, right? Okay, cool. HH, this is part of the exercise, right? You want to hear those seventh chords as you go through the chord set in any in a major key, right? And then final chord is an upper octave C major seven. I've got the 10th fret of the D string and then barring down at the 12th fret of the top three strings gives me a C major seven chord. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the final thing, right? So, oh, whoops. One more time. Ooh, a little rough. Definitely played it better, get coming into the exercise, but there you go. That's the idea of that one. So you can hear the Do Re Mi kind of. Right? Sort of the jazz version of going through Do Re Mi, right? Got those seven chords happening. And you've got that five chord, which is a dot in a major key when you're talking about seventh chords, that that five chord is dominant. Okay, so that's it's like the D, the G7. It's not major or minor, it's dominant. Right? So it gives it a little bit of a different sound right there. All right, you with me? All good? Any questions, comments? All good, says Scott. Well, there you go. Excellent, excellent. We got through it a few minutes early. Um, there is always one mistake, keeping you on your toes. There you go. I'm going to fix it. Uh, so it should be up by uh, five or 10 past the hour. <laughs> What is that? Uh... Yeah. Excellent. HH, that's awesome. Thanks so much for the kind words. Picking up so much each week. That's the whole point. All right. Alonzo, thank you. Dennis, thank you. King 50, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, Erica. Very nice. Uh, glad you guys dig it. We'll just keep going with it. You know, uh, alternating uh, acoustic one week, electric the next week. Uh, we're probably doing rhythm styles next week, I think, right? Yeah, practice that A minor seven chord. That's a toughie, toughie right there. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. Jody One, I appreciate it. Jeff, thank you. John, thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Back at you. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. <laughs> Soldier of Fortune, please. Oh, good one. Cyclotourist. Hmm. I'll have to, have to look into that one. Good suggestion, thanks. <laughs> H, H, absolutely. Yes, well, the one bright spot in a tough couple of years for sure is uh, hopefully getting more people on this thing, right? Thank you, Craig, I appreciate that. Thank you, Zane, we'll see you next week. Back at you. Scott, do you have a time frame? How long will you be doing these lessons? Scott, um, we've been doing them for a couple of years. Since lockdown, we kind of jumped in on this. It started on Facebook in 2020. We moved to YouTube in 2021. So we've been at it on YouTube for about a year, maybe a little bit more. Um, until I hear otherwise, we're doing it every Friday. All right. So we'll just keep going with it. Steve, thank you so much. Gerald. Thanks so much for the kind words. I appreciate that. Arthur, yes, we'll see you next week. Excellent, Scott. And Scott, if you're new to these sessions, uh, they're they're available on the Guitar Tricks channel on YouTube, all the back episodes. And uh, the, the links to the tabs are still up. Um, <laughs> might, be, might be one mistake in them, <laughs> given my track record. So if you find the mistake. Douglas, thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody.
you have taught me roundabout on guitar tricks. Oh, Scott, cool. I love that one. Great one. <laughs> HH, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, getting a little better each and every week, right? Hopefully. <laughs> Steve, I like it. Fun factor is always high here. That's a great compliment. Thanks so much. I hope it's fun, also inspiring, and of course, always educational. <laughs> we hope, right? Well, Jim, thank you so much, Jim Gregory. I appreciate the kind words. Everybody, have a great weekend. Have a great next week. And uh, we'll see you on the electric next Friday, all right? Take care, everybody. See ya. <laughs>